The test of a nation's values is not how we treat those who are law-abiding and easy to like. It's how we treat those whose actions we abhor. So our treatment of Shamima Begum, two other so-called ISIS brides, and the six British children they have between them, shows that we are a nation that is failing. Instead of recognising these women as cult victims or terrorists who need to be processed through our criminal justice system, as Brits entitled to legal protection and as parents of British children, we have conducted policy by tabloid headline. Now that Begum's three-week-old baby Jarrah has tragically died, even the most bloodthirsty among us, who called a short time ago for Begum to be left to rot in a refugee camp, are now showing a change of heart. This was a death we could have prevented, and we know it. Instead, as we celebrated International Women's Day, for the right type of law-abiding, inspiring, ideologically attractive women, we showed just how limited our principles are for women like these. And for me, that makes all our celebrations ring hollow. So when you say, Afwa, uh, women like these, you're referring to women who actually think that killing children in arenas is somehow justified. That's what we're talking about when we say we're dealing with women like these. I'm talking about people like Shamim Begum, who, as a child, was groomed by a cult and, and has now put herself in a situation where she may have committed and crimes as an and should adult, be tried. As so. a 19 year old adult, sits there and comfortably states that she stands by the decisions that she's made and is comfortable with it. So my, my point is, Whilst you're presenting this person as an absolute victim that I should be dashing over to collect and hug and all the rest of it and bring back... Is that how I presented after? it in my intro, Michelle? Well, Did you not hear me saying that they could be terrorists <laughs> who should be processed as such by the criminal justice system? Yes, but, but the criminal justice options. system that we have is currently not fit for purpose when it comes to these cases. Hence, we have a variety of um, jihadis or people that have gone over to there in the first place wandering the streets. So what I would say is, firstly, it would make me sound callous if I wasn't to acknowledge the fact that it's tragic that an innocent baby has died nobody would wish for that no matter what the parents have done no, no baby deserved that so you know that's terrible but ultimately this is a lady who put herself in that situation who chose to be in that situation and even we'll see a clip I'm sure um, very soon when when the question was put to her would you allow your child to be taken away ie brought to safety the answer was no have you ever interviewed someone who <coughs> has been in a cult or groomed by a cult Michelle I have not. Because I have completely different kind of cult, totally different circumstances. But when I saw that interview with Shamima Begum, her monotone voice, her inability to make eye contact, her complete detachment from reality... Well, should we watch it? I have to say, should I saw a lot it? of similarities. Yeah, let's watch it. Shamima Begum was worried about her son, and her family said they wanted to bring him to Britain, although it wasn't something she favoured. Would you be prepared to let the son go to the UK if he has... He would, he would stay with you. Yeah. So oh, she didn't even want her own child to be brought Correct. back to safety here, by the my, way. My point is, and I'll bring you yeah. in, Magic, my point is there are around 850 people who went from Britain to join ISIS who've come back to the UK, right? About half of them, I believe, have been uh, put through the criminal justice system or some kind of de-radicalisation process. Almost none have been stripped of their British citizenship. This is a girl who went as a child who was stripped of her British nationality because of public outrage following that interview. We don't know if she has the mentality of someone groomed by a cult. We don't know if she's committed offences because she's not been tried. She hasn't been through the rule of law processes we claim define us as a country. Just because people don't like her, that this is what's happened to her. And the consequence, I believe, yep. is that her child has now died. And I just want to, I'll then bring you in, Majid, read the letter her family sent to the Home Office. Ms Begum requests this reconsideration as an act of mercy on the basis of the following new information, namely the death of her newborn son. It is extremely unlikely that Shamima will be in a fit state to make any rational decisions. As far as we are aware, the British government did not ask for the views of, nor consult with the government of Bangladesh on whether Shamima held dual nationality before the decision depriving citizenship. You will appreciate there are immediate fears for Shamima's health and safety, and the matter is urgent. 
This is a, a 19 year old, a teenager who has lost three children in a short space of time, who is under fear for her life, who is British, and who we have essentially <coughs> left in violation of domestic <coughs> and international magic, law. Magic, yeah. magic, in a tragic my, my final <laughs> sentence, sorry, Magic, because I'm sorry. really interested in what you've got to say as well, but I just want to be clear this child very sadly died because of the choices his mother made. Nothing more. So, nothing can less. I just say that I think this is a bit of a red herring? this entire angle that's being debated right now, I think it's less helpful, though relevant, to talk about whether she has been groomed, whether we hate her, like her, feel sorry for her. It's relevant, but less helpful to this particular conversation, in my view, because I think what's more relevant is the legal precedent that could or could not be set from stripping citizenships, and whether that creates a two-tier citizenship in this country. That's point number one, and I think that should concern us more because of its potential long-term implications legally and also for community uh, relations in this country between those who have dual citizenship and those who don't. The second point that I think really does, like a hot knife through the butter, uh, get to the point here, is actually uh, less so, again, about whether we like her or not, but about whether we demand the right from other countries to deport <clears throat> terrorists that, that have come from those countries that are here in this country, like we did with Abu Qatada, like we did with uh, Omar Bakri Muhammad, like we did with uh, Abu Hamza the hook hand. We got rid of them because they weren't born here, they came from elsewhere, and the same voices that, that demanded getting rid of them now in a, in a bit of a contradiction, do, doesn't want to take responsibility for our own born and raised terrorists who have gone to other countries who want back, to send them back. Hold on, Michelle. You guys had a long time, right? And there's only one consistent answer here, which is either we deport our foreign terrorists to other countries and expect ours to come back here, or we don't deport ours that are here with us and therefore don't take ours back from over there either. Nick. Let's hear what the Home Secretary, Sajid Javid, said about this in the House of Commons. I don't want any more children brought into a war zone because their parents think that they will automatically be bailed out no matter what the risk. But the UK is doing all we can to help innocent people caught up in this conflict. The death of any British child, even those child, children born to a foreign terrorist fighter, of course it is a tragedy. But the only person responsible for the death of that child is the foreign terrorist fighter. Afwa, you want to bring her back and put her through the British judicial system. What are you going to charge her with? She's not a foreign terrorist fighter. No. She's British. You want to bring her back and put her through the British judicial system. What are you going to charge her with? Has there been an invest... I am not... I haven't done the investigation. Would you ask the question, what are you going to charge her with? It depends what offences she's committed. There's no laws. That's, there's no, that, there's that, no, that, no, of course there are laws. We need new laws. Fine. Yeah, yeah, Nick the solution right. to the criminal Afwa. justice system being flawed, as Michelle said, there and the law no not being law. in a fit state, is not to... Just decide you absolve yourself of the problem. The problem is we have no laws to try her. We should go yeah. where this government has failed and previous governments is when these young people started flocking off to Syria to join IS. That yeah. is when they needed to impose laws and they make it absolutely plain. <clears throat> if you want to run off, that's fine. You will be brought back and you will go to jail. Yeah. There is no law that's to not there's the no law to prosecute. That, the I, I hear Sajid Javid saying that the British government has a responsibility to help innocent British people. That is not how nationality works. You have a responsibility to British criminals mm. as much as you have to innocent British people. Mm. And, and, Nick and, has and a like point. Magid pointed Nick out, that a is a point. dangerous precedent. Can we go back to the, the legal framework has been called insufficient by the yeah. policy <clears throat> exchange. And there is a now serious move, which I think Sajid Javid has looked at, to bring back the charge of treason, the crime of treason, into the rule book because mm. the sentencing guidelines and the, and the justice system are inadequate with the current situation, which is that you have British-born citizens co-operating with a non-state aggressor. Mm. So what they need to do is introduce the, the crime of treason again for yes. people who betray the British here, state. Right? You're watching The Pledge on Sky News. And up next, I'm celebrating the big 3-0.